I'm Congressman Phil Gingrey of the 11th Congressional District. Thank you be for becoming fans of my Facebook page and for your great questions. We're going to try to answer as many as possible today. We'll do this again next week. Let's get right to your questions and I'll try to keep my answers brief. The first question comes from Cindy and Richard. They both want to ask about the fair tax. Uh, Cindy asks what the long range goals are for introducing the fair tax legislation and Richard wants to know why the Democrats, uh, when they bring up this VAT tax, the value added tax, Republicans don't just simply counter with the fair tax. Great questions. H.R. Uh, 25, the fair tax, it was introduced originally by John Lunder, my colleague in the 7th Congressional District who represents all of Gwinnett County in that 7th. Uh, I'm a co-sponsor of that legislation and very much in favor of it. Uh, it, in fact, would replace all federal income tax, not just have a fair tax on consumption uh, as the value added tax would, but this would also eliminate the 16th Amendment and the uh, IRS and all of those employees that are uh, driving us crazy every year. Uh, so uh, uh, very much in favor of the fair tax, Cindy and Richard. Uh, again, it abolishes the IRS uh, and all these auditors of individual income tax. Uh, it exempts, of course, life needs such as groceries and prescriptions from that tax. Uh, I think it's a good idea, uh, Richard, uh, in regard to uh, when the Democrats bring this up, if they bring it up, uh, and, and I suspect, as you do, that they very well might uh, try to pile on us, uh, not a replacement of the income tax, but an addition to the in income tax and this value-added tax in most of the countries of the European Union average something like 20 percent on top of their 40, 45 percent uh, federal income tax. Uh, we don't want that and it certainly would be a good idea for the Republicans to submit as an amendment, a kind of a replacement amendment to the VAT tax, John Linder, Neil Boyce, my and your fair tax and I think we should do that. The next question comes from Jennifer and Marilyn and Shannon, many others in fact, who want to know uh, about this Puerto Rican legislation, H.R. 2499. Uh, the, we're voted on today, in fact. Uh, the debate is going on, on the floor right now as we speak uh, whether or not the, the Congress uh, would approve of Puerto Rico having a plebiscite uh, in regard to their status. Do they want to remain a commonwealth? Uh, do they want complete independence of us? Or, in fact, do they want to become a, 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 uh, another state uh, of the United States of America. Uh, I am, as Steve said, adamantly opposed to this bill. Here are some of the reasons, real, real quickly. Uh, English and Spanish are both official language in Puerto Rico. Uh, Puerto Rico can do this on their own. They don't need a federally sanctioned election. They have voted uh, three times in the past, and each time statehood has failed. In, in other words, the majority of the people uh, on the island of Puerto Rico uh, have voted against becoming a uh, part of the United States. They are United States citizens currently, uh, but they don't want to join. They would rather remain a territory. Uh, in this two-step process that our vote would allow them to do does not accurately reflect, reflect the views of all Puerto Ricans. The first round of voting unites opponents of the current Commonwealth system, but then it excludes the Commonwealth option in the second vote. So uh, basically, uh, if, if one third plus one of the, the people, uh, not only those on, on the island of Puerto Rico, but also people that were born in Puerto Rico who live in the United States would be eligible to vote on this as well. Uh, the winner of the referendum, which will be uh, whatever option, as I say, receives just 33% plus one. That means the majority who probably would have voted against it as they did three times before would kind of be shut out, uh, and I don't think that's fair. Uh, a decision that can start the island down the road to independence or statehood should not be taken lightly and should have the support of the majority of the people in Puerto Rico. Uh, and of course, it will tremendously, if they become a state, tremendously increase the financial obligations of our federal government at a time when we can't afford it. Uh, the poverty rate in Puerto Rico today is three times as severe as in our poorest state uh, of the 50 United States. Uh, you know, all all the, the, the welfare uh, giveaways would, would be so much more uh, if Puerto Rico uh, were to become a state. I just don't think we can afford it.
the next question comes from Brian uh, and a few others, and they want to know what are the Republicans in Congress doing to offer support to the governor of Arizona in fending off the liberal media over the recent immigration enforcement law? Others ask if Georgia will adopt any similar legislation. Let me tell you, uh, Georgia is, is abiding by the 287G program, uh, which is a program with uh, uh, immigration and customs enforcement, where essentially a state, a county, or a city, uh, in, in the case of Cobb County, uh, the Sheriff's Department, under, under the leadership of Sheriff Neil Warren, participates in that 287G program. Uh, the way it works is just simply if, if someone uh, is arrested for a crime uh, in Cobb County and they are incarcerated in the county jail uh, and they are of uh, uh, Latino uh, descent, uh, then the, the sheriff can ask and find out and verify whether or not uh, they're in this country legally. If they're not in this country legally, when they finish their debt to society, maybe it's three months, six months, uh, a year in jail for whatever crime it was that they were incarcerated, then Immigration and Customs Enforcement would pick that individual up and deport them to their country of origin. Uh, it w we're already doing it in the state of Georgia. Uh, what Arizona has done, and they have 500,000 illegal immigrants in that state, uh, it's a border state, and in, in, in this tremendous amount of crime and, and trafficking and drugs and, and human trafficking, and they have a huge problem there. Uh, coming into this country illegally is a misdemeanor under federal law. They're just verifying that. They're just saying, okay, it's going to be a misdemeanor in the state of Arizona, and we're going to uh, enforce it, and we're going to find out if people here illegally, uh, then they are going to uh, spend six months in jail, and they're going to pay a fine. Uh, so I'm uh, Jan Brewer, the, the, the governor of, uh, uh, of Arizona, I don't, I don't know whether she's a Republican or a Democrat, quite honestly, I don't care. But I agree with her. I think that was the right thing to do, and I support it. And in fact, uh, to Brian and the others, uh, I think it would be good for Georgia to adopt similar legislation. We've got, I think, uh, gosh, I don't know the total number of uh, illegals in Georgia. It's not as bad as it is in Arizona, but it's bad enough. Uh, and we can ill afford it as well regarding schools and uh, health care and, and uh, many other uh, social welfare, welfare systems. Uh, uh, we have a uh, question number four. Diane, uh, she says, drill, baby, drill. Uh, she thinks we should do that. And she goes on to say this is going to add a lot of jobs. We could pay off our debt in China. Uh, she does not like our great country being in debt to another country like China, Japan, any country. Uh, anything we can do in this area. Well, Diane, I support completely drill, baby, drill. Uh, and we spent a, a whole August recess two years ago, a year and a half ago, uh, coming back, Republicans actually uh, not at home in their district, coming back up to Washington and, and speaking to the American people directly from the House floor saying, we need an all of the above uh, energy policy, uh, energy bill. We don't need cap and tax, so-called cap and trade. Uh, in this business of no nuclear pa uh, plants, new plants in the United States in over 30 years is insanity. It's clean, it's safe, uh, and is e economical. Uh, so, uh, as you point out, we've got also resources of petroleum and natural gas uh, off the outer continental shelf of both our eastern and, and uh, uh, Pacific coast. Uh, why should we not drill for that? Uh, so, yes. Drill, baby, drill. Diane, I agree with you completely. Jerry has a question. Is there any new movement on the death tax issue? Uh, asset rich but cash poor family farms could, be thing of, could become a thing of the past without a change in the estate tax. Jerry, you're absolutely right. Uh, I am in favor of the complete elimination of the estate tax or the so-called death tax. I don't think death should be a taxable event. Steve Forbes was running for president uh, a number of years ago. Uh, Steve uh, of uh, Forbes magazine fame said, no taxation without respiration. And I agree with him completely. But if we can't get that, then I think the least we should do is get as much exclusion and then as lower tax rate uh, on the balance of, estate, of the estate as we possibly can. Now, a bill came through the House uh, during this 111th Congress 
uh, saying, well, uh, we'll raise the exclusion uh, from a million dollars to 3.5 million for an individual. Of course, for a couple that would be double. And we'll lower the, the tax on the balance from 55% to 45%. Now, I voted against that because, I, I, as I say, I think we ought to completely eliminate it. On the Senate side, uh, they have not dealt with it yet, but there's some talk of that exclusion being raised to $5 million uh, and the actual tax on the balance of 35%. Now, that's getting pretty darn close to uh, a level uh, which is almost complete elimination. On principle, that's what I want. But if we can get it to the point where there's $5 million for an individual for exclusion, in other words, no tax on a state uh, that are valued, current value, uh, of $5, $5 million or less, uh, and any tax on the balance of 35% rather than 55%, I probably would vote in favor of that. Uh, well, uh, that concludes uh, for this week. Uh, I want to thank you all for uh, great feedback on Facebook, and we'll try to go come back to you next week and take some more questions. And again, I'll try to keep these answers short, and we'll get to as many as we can. We're, by the way, I want to remind you, my office is participating in the United States House Republican New Media Challenge. Let me repeat it, New Media Challenge for Republican members, even the old guys like me. Whichever member gets the most new fans wins. I don't know what the prize is, but I want to win. So please continue to help. Tell your friends to join us. Uh, become part of my Facebook, and I uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks.